Hello everyone, this is Dr. Amir from Ijo Academy. In this video, I'm going to explain how the torsion formula is obtained for a circular shaft and what the underlying assumptions are to obtain this important formula. When a cantilever shaft, which is fixed at one end, is subjected to a torque or torsional moment T, the shear stress tau on an element on the cross section of the shaft linearly varies in terms of the radius r. And this shear stress also depends on the sectional property of the section j and also the torque t. All right, let's explore the assumptions of the torsion formula. Here we have the important assumptions to derive the torsion formula. Uh, one, the shaft is a straight with a circular cross section. Two, every planar and circular cross section perpendicular to its longitudinal axis remains planar and circular after the twist. This is a significant assumption. Uh, we must pay attention that this second assumption is not valid uh, when the cross section is not circular. For example, for a rectangular section, there is bulge or warp of the section after twist. Three, the material behavior of the shaft is linear elastic. In other words, it follows Hooke's law. Four, the material of the shaft is homogeneous. Therefore, these four assumptions are the fundamentals in obtaining the torsion formula. And now we investigate how the shaft deforms under the applied torque. Uh, all right, uh, let's see how the shaft deforms under the applied torque. Uh, based on the assumptions enumerated earlier in this video, all circular cross sections of the shaft remain circular and also longitudinal lines along the shaft's length uh, get twisted, but uh, still remain linear. Uh, moreover, uh, each radial line on cross sections uh, remains linear. It means that uh, the twist on each cross section uh, linearly varies uh, from its longitudinal axis to the outer surface of the shaft. All these deformational assumptions can be animated and illustrated uh, in the purple plane shown here along the shaft. Uh, pay attention how the plane gets twisted during the deformation. Uh, to elaborate the distortion of the shaft under the torque, uh, we consider a small disk element of length dx, which is located at x from the end of the shaft undergoing the rotation of phi x. Due to the twist, the difference between the front and rear faces is d phi, which then causes a shear strain gamma. This shear strain angle gamma can be related to the twist angle d phi by the length of the yellow arc as r times d phi is equal to dx times gamma, or gamma is equal to r times d phi over dx. Since the twisted line remains linear, it is seen that both angles d phi 1 and d phi 2 are equal, and d phi over dx is then constant. In other words, the magnitude of the shear strain angle gamma only varies with its radial distance r from the axis of the shaft. From this equation, we can write d phi over dx equals gamma over r equals gamma max over r capital. Therefore, we obtain gamma is equal to r over r capital times gamma max. Thereby, the shear strain within the shaft linearly varies along any radial line from zero at its center to maximum gamma at its outer boundary. Now, uh, it is time to derive the famous uh, torsion formula. According to the assumptions, the shaft's material behavior is linear elastic and follows the Hooke's law under the shear deformation. 
Substituting the shear deformation obtained earlier into the Hooke's law results in a similar equation in which the shear stress has the linear variation along any radial line from zero to tau max. If we consider an arbitrary element of area dA located at the radial distance r, the shear force dF applied to this element is tau times dA. This internal force produces an internal torque dT on the section. Total torque is obtained by integrating the dT relation over the entire cross section. Since tau max and the shaft's radius r are constant, they can be taken out of the integral. This integral is the polar moment of inertia of the shaft's cross-sectional area about the shaft's longitudinal axis, denoted by J. Therefore, the torque relation can be rearranged in the compact form known as the torsion formula. If the shear stress relation is substituted into the torsion formula for tau max, another form of the torsion relation for the intermediate distance R on the cross-section is determined. Both of these equations are often referred to as the torsion formula. Remember that these equations are only valid when the mentioned assumptions are satisfied. All right, everyone, uh, that was it for this video. If you would like to see more of this topic and other topics for strength of materials, you can also study the practice ebook that my colleague and I prepared. Until next video, cheers.